Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to another edition of the Sports Blitz. I'm Mike Neville. Please be joined by the University of Mary Washington Men's Cross Coach Kurt Glazer. Kurt, glad to see you again. Thanks, Mike. And uh, last season for your lacrosse team, which of course plays in the spring at the University of Mary Washington, advanced all the way to the Capital Athletic Conference Tournament semifinals and unfortunately fell to Frostburg State, a team that you had beaten the week before, but you ended up losing by a goal. Uh, a tough way to end the season. Yeah, we play well down the stretch, though. We uh, struggled a little bit offensively. We had lost a, a lot of, I would say, 90% of our offense right. to graduation from the year before, and we played well down the stretch. Our defense played well most of the season. Uh, they were pretty much the reason we got to where we were at that point and had a chance to play in the conference championship and we came that close. Right. And so, uh, yeah, we just couldn't uh, couldn't find the offense at times this year, and uh, and and so. Uh, close games that right. we were winning the year before. Right, exactly. You were telling me also that, uh, you know, losing to Frostburg in that uh, semifinal match, you certainly had your chances. You had some point-blank shots, and the goalkeeper for uh, Frostburg ended up being the conference's uh, goalie of the year, if I'm not mistaken. And, he was uh, first team yeah. all-conference goalie, and we had a couple of one-on-ones with him, and uh, they, uh, you know, he was able to make the saves. Uh, but our defense played really well. They were really high-scoring offense, right. and our defensive middies and our close defense played really well against Frostburg and gave us a chance, and uh, you know we had we had some other opportunities too, and just couldn't right. find a way. But you know it was nice to see a guy like Jack Carver step up and have a couple of goals, both left-handed for a right-handed right player. Uh, there's a guy that maybe we can rely on a little bit more next right. year, and and so uh, you know there was definitely signs of hope for the future and building. I know also you're talking about defense. Your goalkeeper, your goalkeeper, rookie of the year as a freshman, he played outstanding for you all season long. Yeah, he had a couple of 17 goal. 17 save games uh, down the stretch and you know I had two I felt like two really good freshmen this year one was the other one was Owen Dingman from Calvert Hall midfielder who was pretty much our best two-way midfielder all right. year and then Colin Bresson our goalkeeper from St. Anne's Belfield you know, they, they both were, uh, were huge for us this right. year uh, Owen gave us offense. Owen usually drew the, the teams, uh, the, the opponents, LSM every right. game, most games. And Colin just stepped up a uh, huge force down the stretch. Right. And uh, looking forward to next season, you think you've got a pretty decent recruiting class coming into the University of Mary Washington. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about the recruiting class. We, uh, we have 22 uh, commits coming in and, and a few walk-ons. Right. Um, it was the first year I had a full-time assistant helping with recruiting, so right. that's going to help us down the down the stretch. Uh, we're out this summer too, working on the 2016s. We have a couple of commits already for 2016. Very good. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, the the depth I think uh, on the practice roster this year is going to be significantly uh, more than it has been, and right. I'm just excited to see the competition and looking for guys to compete for playing time. Every Speaking of competition, the Capital Athletic Conference, it seems like uh, in viewing it the last few years, I mean, Salisbury has been the top dog, right. but it seems like it's getting closer. Teams are getting closer to them. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like the conference as a whole is a lot more competitive than when you first started at Mary Washington? Well, absolutely. Uh, everybody's putting more resources into it. Frostburg, uh, they're a relatively new program, uh, but they've got uh, two full-time assistants right. now. York has always been good. They're 45 minutes up the road from Baltimore. Right. They get a lot of Maryland kids. Um, St. Mary's, uh, a great school uh, in Maryland over on the um, southern shore. Yeah. Uh, they've always been solid. Christopher Newport's been good. Uh, there's just been the, the conference has really come up. And you know, if you point back to 2014 when three teams from the Capital right. Athletic Conference made the national tournament, us and York and Salisbury, we were the only team conference in the country to put three teams in the national tournament that year. We were fortunate to be one of them. And this year we, we uh, slipped a little bit, but right. uh, you know, things go in cycles and you know we're hoping to bounce back and get there again. So explain to the viewers, Kurt, how important that is to have a competitive conference like that. Because I mean, if you win a game 12 to 2 or whatever, you don't really learn a lot. But if you're in dig dog fights game in and game out with your conference, how important is that for the team? You know, whether you win or lose, I mean, for the psyche of the team, because, you know, if you have that competitiveness, knowing that you've got to play your, your A game most of the time, I would think that's for you as a coach and for the players as well. It's got to uh, really help you as far as conference games go. Well, yeah, it prepares you for what you're going to see right. uh, in conference tournament play and it prepares you for the national tournament. And when I was a women's soccer coach a long 
time ago. <laughs> we did the same thing. We tried right. to play as tough a schedule as we could out of conference, and uh, and so you know that prepared us for the national tournament. But absolutely, that helps uh, get you ready for the tough competition you're going to see. Now here in the Fredericksburg region, of course, there's been a number of schools lately that have added uh, lacrosse to their uh, athletic programs. Uh, is the talent getting better? Because it seems like when I first started covering lacrosse in the high school, and of course Stafford County was the only one that had high school lacrosse at the time, but it just seemed like it was like, you know, football players came over to play lacrosse just to stay in shape. But now it looks like you're really getting caliber, uh, good caliber kids that d devote themselves to lacrosse and, uh, you know, a, a good athlete. Are you seeing that in this area? Well, it's nice to see the Spotsy uh, yeah. teams evolve. Massaponics and Cortland played a game out at uh, Marion Washington about a month ago, and I had a chance to be there. And, and, and there's a few guys out there right. that have a chance to play at the next level, and, and so it's nice to see. Uh, it's booming all over the country, though. Right. I mean, there's almost there's just not enough spots for the kids who are out there. Right. I found myself last year saying no to guys in in October when in years past I would have said sure. Right. But right. but it's just. Uh, it's just boom. There's just so many teams out there. I, I was up in Baltimore two days ago, and I saw three really good teams from Long Island, a couple really good teams from Maryland, and, and a couple good, solid Virginia teams. And there's just so many, right. so much talent out right. there. Right, exactly. Now, as far why, why is lacrosse taking off? I mean, uh, let me ask you real quick. Uh, when you recruit athletes, do you want the multi-sport athlete, or would you rather have somebody that concentrates on just, say, lacrosse? Well, um, that's a two-edged sword. Isn't yeah, it, it is. I, I, I like, I do like guys who play a couple of sports. So, um, especially guys who play football or basketball, because usually they're competing in another sport in another season against some of the best best athletes in the school, right. and so they have to get playing time against some of the best athletes in the school. And so I think that's a good thing. Right. You know, so that prepares them for the next level when they have to go out and just. They have to, you know, get into it and mix it up every day in practice right. year round if they want to be on the field. The spring right exactly now we're getting ready to wrap up this segment but uh, you say in October you might have a camp or some something going on at Mary Washington explain what you what you're hoping to do well we've been doing some what we call prep camps or ID camps for the past couple of years and uh, we're hoping to pull something like that off again on October 11th uh, during our fall break and that's the plan it's either going to be in, uh, it's still in the formulation stages uh, an ID camp or it may end up being a tournament if right. we can uh, get some club teams down Okay. Well, as soon as we get the information, you'll pass that to us, and we'll let we'll folks do. know about what's going on. We'll. Kurt, great seeing you. Congratulations you, on another great season, and uh, good luck in the future. Thanks. University of Mary Washington men's lacrosse coach Kurt Glazer joining us on this first segment of the Sports Blitz. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll catch up with Ryan Zinkin, the former River Bend uh, soccer player who also won a national championship with the University of Virginia men's soccer program. We'll talk to him as we continue with this edition of the Sports Blitz. Stay with us.